A nested cube or double cube resistive network is shown connecting node A that is connected to Vn to node B that is then connected to inverting or negative input terminal of this op amp. V of 10R then it goes to the output V out and then we want to show that V out is simply negative 15 times V in. Uh, that's very interesting and simple relation. So how is this possible? Let's uh, figure out a quick way. So what we want to do is from node A to node B, we want to find an equivalent resistance for this uh, double cube network so that we can replace it with this equivalent resistance. If we can do that, then as a result, the overall circuit would look like as simple as this, R equivalent, and then just an inverting amplifier scenario using one op amp and 10R and then going to V out. So if that is the case, then everything will be easy because then we can say V out is simply negative 10R over R equivalent times V in. That's a well-known relation for the input output relation for the inverting amplifier scenario and just is basically obtained writing one KCL here. But so I need R equivalent in denominator. That's what I need. So let's find that R equivalent. That's my target. So I, we need to find this R equivalent. All right, so I'm gonna remove this. By the way, one thing before we proceed with finding R equivalent, there are R, so on every edge of this double cube, every edge, there is a resistor R. The only reason it is not shown is for just clarity so that the figure remains clean, but let's have that in mind. So the strategy to find R equivalent is this V in applied at the input of the circuit, it will try to inject a current I. And then I want to chase this current. So I want to chase it so that uh, when I chase the current I, uh, I get to whatever current that flows from point A to let's say point two, node two in the circuit. And then whatever current that goes through node two and a resistor here, uh, get to node 3 and uh, then from node 3 I want to find a current that goes through this resistor R so that I get to node 4 and finally on node 4 I want to chase another current that goes through this resistor R and finally gets to node B and via this route of let's say A uh, basically V in on node A or at node A and then to node 2 and then to node 3, and then to node 4, and then to node B. Through this route, I want to write a KVL, so Kirchhoff voltage law, or the total sum of the total voltage drops, uh, so that I compute VAB. The reason for that is because then I can say R equivalent for the double cube is equal to VAB, the total voltage drop from, from A to B, divide by the current that is coming in. So if I somehow manage to find VAB as a function of this current, then I can find the R equivalent. So my target is to figure out this VAB. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, to achieve that, I am going to uh, do it this way. So I'm gonna remove this, this whole thing here. Okay, uh, just to clean up. All right. So let's, let's chase what is going on here. So from node A, um, there is complete symmetry in the circuit, mirror symmetry. There are four, as observed from point of node A uh, on the left side, there are four paths for the current that can go and they are exactly looking uh, the same impedance wise. So the current I can, cannot go other than just divide by four and going through each of these routes. So divide by four, divide by four, and then divide by four. That I divide by four will go through resistor R and will result in a voltage drop across resistor R, VR. So basically from A to two, if I write KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law, or basically sum of voltage drops, I have V in, um, and then what I have is V in minus the voltage drop, is uh, I divide by four 
times R. So that is accounting for voltage drop across the resistor R as we saw from node 1 to 2. So now we are at node 2. So the current I over 4 that is coming to node 2, again it notices that uh, there is not dif any difference between the three possible routes that it can go through. Again, there are resistor R on all of these edges. So R and R. So these car three currents that are going out should be exactly equal to each other. So I over 4 is divided by 3 times and therefore I divided by 12 is now going through this resistor R resulting in a voltage drop. So this time the voltage drop is um, is I divided by 12 times R. Okay, so now we got we get to node 3. At node 3, uh, the next move is getting to node 4 and computing the voltage drop across the path. So how can we do that? Well, the interesting thing is because of the properties of double cube, this node 4 is exactly the, has exactly the same potential and same observation as this node 4 here. So these two exactly match each other. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, from perspective of node 3, there are two similar, exactly similar routes to go. So one route is this 3 to 4, and the other route is this 3 to 4. But at the same time, this I over 12 that is arriving at node 3, there is similarly, because of circuit symmetry, another I over 12 that is coming from the top node that is a mirror symmetry of node 2. So this node 2 here that I showed you at the left side of the circuit, it has exactly same resemblance symmetrically uh, on top. So I over two, 12 coming here, another I over 12 coming down to node 3, but at the same time then 2 current going out of 3 to 4 and 3 to 4 should look like the same. So all I'm trying to say is as a result I over 12 is going through this route. So I can continue the KVL or sum of voltage drops I over 12 times R. Finally, from node 4 toward node B, an interesting observation. We notice that there are four potential nodes that are exactly mimicking node 4. So here is, here is one node. Another one is this node here. Another one is this node here. And finally, another one is this node here. So there are four nodes in this circuit that will mimic the exactly same presence and same impedance impact. So from perspective of node B, all of these four nodes exactly behave the same. So the same current should come from all of them. So uh, this current, let me change the color so that we can have, it's easier to see what I'm talking about. So this current I, is exactly equal to this current I, is exactly equal to this current, and exactly equal to this current. So four current arrive at node B. The final product or result of these going out of the double cube should match what was coming in. And what was coming in through the circuit was I. So I should go out. Therefore, each of these four things that come to node B should be I over four. So in summary, the current so in summary, the current I over 4, so I over 4, is going through a resistor here, connecting a node 4 to B. So the last component I need to subtract is negative, and I'm intentionally having it with red color to indicate that last connection from 4 to B, which is I over 4 times resistor R. And that's it. We get to node B after subtracting these four edges that we traverse through from B in, we get to node B. Now the nice thing is, at node B, node B is connected to negative input terminal of ideal op-amp, and this op-amp is, is properly biased, supply voltage is positive, negative, let's say 5 volt and negative 5 volt connected, op-amp is operating properly with a proper negative feedback. As a result, virtual short is valid for this op-amp. It means that the positive input terminal and negative input terminal of op amp should be equal to each other. But then you can see that positive input terminal is at ground zero, so zero volt here. And because of virtual sh short of the op amp, um, 
in linear region, we have virtual ground here, zero volt. So what I'm trying to say is voltage of node B is zero. Great. So what I found is very interesting. I found that, let me go back to my uh, original color. So I found that Vn, which is equal to Va minus Vb, or basically Vab, is equal to the sum of, uh, if you moved all these guys to the other side, is equal to the sum of all these guys. Um, and as a result, I mean, of course, you have to remove all the negative sign because you move them to the other side. And if you compute the add addition of all these guys, you end up with um, you end up with just one over two plus one over six, which is uh, three over six plus one over six, four over six. So it become effectively two over three, um, and then I R. So that is. Uh, VAB effectively equal to 2 over 3 times I times R. I am going to name this as equation 2, and I'm going to substitute that into uh, the equation 1 here that we uh, initially found uh, or considered for finding R equivalent. So from using 1 and 2, substituting for numerator VAB in, in R equivalent equation, I am going to write uh, 2 over 3, so... Uh, it's VAB divided by I, and I am going to substitute for VAB using equation 2. So it's 2 over 3, I, R, divided by I. These two I cancel out, and what we found is very interesting. The equivalent resistance of this double cube or nested cube network is just 2 over 3 times R. Very interesting. Okay, so now that as a last step, I am going to substitute that thing into, uh, the, into the inverting amplifier gain that I just mentioned at the beginning. So using, let's say, the result I found, I get negative 10R divided by 2 over 3 times R Vn. Now, of course... Uh, we get rid of R, that cancel out, so R cancel out with R, and as a result, we get exactly the relation that we wanted, minus 30 divided by 2 minus 15 times V in. That's the V out. So that proves exactly what we wanted to prove in this interesting circuit. I hope that this example is helpful in terms of illustrating an interesting, um, unique let's say nested cube net or double cube resisted network and uh, in an example that involves inverting amplifier and how we find the equivalent resistance for that.